You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button on our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for July 15th, 2022. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we have been podcasting for more than 12 and a half years without once being charged with contempt of Congress, it's The Professional Left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Not all podcasters, Blue Gal. <laughs> well, we've had contempt of certain Congress people. Yes, That's we have. different. We, we certainly have. We have a, a couple people in Congress we have contempt for that are in our party. Yes, um, we but do. we have never been charged with contempt no. for Congress no. or contempt of <laughs> Convicted? No. No. 32 okay, arrests, no conviction. That's a point of pride. If you're from Chicago, hey, I got a lot of arrests. Not a single goddamn conviction, okay? Yeah. We're going to get into a lot of that today. We There's are. a lot of people facing uh, trial or yes. legal fees of various yeah. sizes. Yes. Not not all, our problem. Not Well, It's it's our. it certainly is. I, I hate to say entertainment. Because yeah, it's yeah, that's not watching fair. the world burn is not entertaining, no, but it is certainly um, rewarding spiritually to mm-hmm. see justice being visited on so many people who so richly deserve it. And um, mm-hmm. and we have to return to a former fake sponsor of ours this week. Oh, yes. Drift class. Yes, yes. Uh, we have received so many urgent calls from various radical Supreme Court justices, but you have Supreme Cult justices in our notes. I, I like do. That. That's my coinage, and it's yes. mine, and you can't have it, and you need to pay me $5 <laughs> if you use it. But please Supreme go on. Cult. The Supreme Cult. Uh, we got a lot of requests for this that we felt we just had to bring back our older sponsor, Hello Fascist. Mm-hmm. The at-home meal kit for Republicans with a new testimonial from a D. Brooks of Washington, D.C., Waiters hate me because I'm a privileged oaf who use social media to collectively insult their profession for not being sufficiently awestruck by my awesomeness. I lived in dread that they may secretly organize a national day of urine to pee in my food wherever I go. But now, with Hello Fascist, I can stuff my face and insult the working class without fear. Hello Fascist has expanded its mission to provide every former Trump administration stooge and an enabler in America and all the radical lunatics he packed onto the courts with fresh home-cooked meals with no planning, no shopping, and no one calling you out for your moral depravity in public. Just ask these satisfied customers. This is from Sarah H.S. of Washington, D.C. Previously, dinner meant sneaking into a restaurant in disguise and hoping that no one would recognize me before my food had arrived. With Hello Fascist, now I can try to fill the hole in my soul with deep-fried Twinkies and sour mash in peace. S. Miller, also of Washington, D.C., says he was sick and tired of MS-13 gangs peeing in my Cobb salad. I know that's not vinaigrette, Pedro. So thank God for Hello Fascist. It's like a big, beautiful wall around my tiramisu. And Brent K., also of Washington, D.C., says the beer was as cold as Sam Alito's heart and as delicious as the tears of terrified liberals. Hello Fascist, because those people are definitely peeing in your food. And uh, it's it's a little bit sad about Brett, yeah, not being Brett. able to eat a mediocre steak dinner, right, and having to sneak out of the restaurant before he could have dessert with a peaceful group outside the restaurant who he never actually saw or encountered in any way, protesting yeah. the fact that he was one of the people stripping rights away from Americans and then sitting down to a nice steak dinner to with a big fuck you smile on his face, yeah. Yeah. Poor Brett. He had to sneak out the back like a peasant. So uh, why don't we start, Drift Glass, with the January 6th hearing this sure, week. Sure, sure. Uh, on Tuesday afternoon, and the next one, exciting to say, is in prime time. It is. Uh, but um, what what struck you most, or what do you want to talk about first when it comes to this hearing? Uh, well, I'd like to recommend that everyone listening listen to all the other wonderful news sources and podcasts that have gone mm-hmm. over this in immense detail um, and just bring up the highlights from my point of view. The The big one to me was Brad Parscale, mm. uh, the guy who's yeah. in charge of Trump media, 
uh, who does all of his social media crap for him, who basically said, uh, we we got people killed. It was mm-hmm. the rhetoric. It was Trump's language. It was Trump's incitement that killed people and got them injured. That was the reason they did this. He said it in text. And of course, I believe Brad Parscale is now back working for the Trump organization. Yeah. Because these yeah. people- Still making money off of they, Trump. They do not have a soul. They don't. Mm-hmm. They have- they have a bank account, and as long as you put money in their bank account, they will do whatever you tell them to do. And there's a you know a pang of conscience during an actual crisis when you can actually see the result of your uh, the horrors you're inflicting on this country happening, you know, a, a few hundred yards away from you mm-hmm. at your direction when it becomes real. And by real, I mean right on your fucking doorstep. That's when they certainly got sort of get a little, little ugu about. Oh, maybe we shouldn't have, you know, assembled a mob and sent them over to the Capitol and lied about the election. Um, but after that, it's like, oh, you know, these things happen. Let's move on to the next paycheck. And and the thing that struck me, uh, day, you know, two days later, now having had time to absorb and think about it, is once again the utter failure of the basic administration of the Trump White House. Yes. That people like Sydney could just get in and, and you know these these four crazy people right right Sydney Powell General Flynn Rudy Giuliani and this rando who no one in the White House knew from hey uh, hey he's the CEO he's of Overstock Overstock right yeah. he's, he's the former CEO of Overstock so and they got in without an appointment without security clearance walk right into the Oval Office with no one with the quote-unquote president. I mean, right. at this point, Donald Trump is holding the office of president of the United States. That's what NATO thinks. That's what China thinks. That's what Russia thinks. And it turns out City Powell can just walk in and start talking to him about stealing an election. About, you know, secret devices planted in thermometers in around Bolivia. the world. Right, sure, right. sure. You know, um, it, and and look at this chart here with all of the ring uh, doorbells being hooked right. up to the election system in the United States. You know, it's so obvious. It's so clear. And, <laughs> and he's just sitting there, you know, lapping it up with a biscuit like, yeah, yeah, because yeah. he's running out of options at this point. At this point, right. there's, you know, there's all the courts are going against him. The election went against him. And um, he has to stay in office because right. he has learned from the Mueller investigation and from an impeachment that being president has a perk that you don't get prosecuted for shit, like you're, apparently. You're untouchable. You're untouchable. Yeah. Nobody yeah. can, yeah. unless, you know, Barry Goldwater rises from the grave and right. comes to your office and says, dude, with it's this, time to quit. With this um, Republican Party in office in the House and Senate, mm-hmm. you will never you will never face consequences. No, if, this, this, if this Republican Party were in, were in office in the 1970s, Richard Nixon would be entering his 17th term in office right, right now. Right, right. Because right. they are a bunch of fascists, a bunch yeah. of power mad or accommodationist quizlings like like Lindsey Graham, mm-hmm. who, right. will, who will swing any which way you want as long as you promise to keep getting him elected and keep him at the table. Mm-hmm. He is a total whore, a total belly crawling whore. And mm-hmm. everyone knows it and no one says it because that's the way they play the game. Well, yeah. Um, Politeness in the Senate is everything. Yeah. I also so, thought letting... Okay. Um, uh, I thought Nancy Pelosi engineered this, by the way. Mm-hmm. The re- let's remember, the reason everyone is going, Liz Cheney's got, ooh, she's got some stuff. She's got some fire. I am thrilled that that Nancy Pelosi has found a way to harness the Cheney family's insatiable appetite for revenge mm-hmm. uh, in the service of democracy. Good for yeah. her. Good for Pelosi. And the fact that they gave her the, the bombshell to drop at the end. You mm-hmm. know, the, the coming up in our next episode, um, right. witness tampering. That's just good television, and that's good script writing. It is um, good television, isn't it? They've really but, worked to have good television. But Liz and Cheney that's what's driving it, Donald Trump crazy, by yes, the way. It's, yes. it's must-see TV. And yeah. it is not – Liz Cheney did not come up with that all on her own and decide all on her own that to sneak this in at the very end. Mm-mm. This was scripted, scripted. And scripted. it was scripted to end on a with a bang – you cut on action, as they say in the mm-hmm, movie. You mm-hmm, cut on, mm-hmm. well, you cut on, that's a big fucking deal. Uh, yeah. Everything else just sort of um, supplemented and bolstered um, everything else we already know. 
that the Republic, this was a plan, a, a plan in, uh, of long, a long range plan involving many, many steps along the way. And the last desperate uh, attempt was to turn a crowd loose on the Capitol. Uh, hopefully that they could, you know, murder Mike Pence and install their people or just stall the process, anything. It doesn't matter. I, I kind of understand the strategy, which is cause chaos and hope for the best. Well, you know, and that's it, what it, happened with Bush Gore. Right. Yep. That's the... You know, um, everyone was looking for hanging chads in Florida and everyone just wanted it to be over. Right. right. They dragged and, it out long, as long as they could. And then the Supreme Court came in and said, we're going to decide it this way. George Bush is president. You're never allowed to use this decision for anything right. else. Goodbye. <laughs> we're leaving town <laughs> for Christmas. Goodbye. We're never you going know. to speak of this again. Right. And you know, and, I, and that was the rehearsal for this. They thought, I, yeah. I'm reminded of a story that I don't believe I've ever told you. It's a minor one from my years working at the city of Chicago. Uh, it was a very busy day, and we were recontracting um, providers. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean we were we were getting ready to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on contracts for various organizations that we're going to give money to, mm -hmm. and. A bunch of these people are sitting in a conference room and I'm in the office with the commissioner and a few other senior managers, et cetera, et cetera. And somebody pops their head in and says, uh, maybe you should know that Jeff is in there negotiating contracts with these people. Oh now, my God. Now Jeff was a special pet of the commissioner. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff got away with murder. Jeff got lots of perks and lots of jobs and lots of promotions that he had no business getting. I but see. she wasn't, she wasn't stupid enough to think this guy was competent to negotiate anything. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. she broke all land speed records, getting hauling ass down the hall, just flew the door open, ran down the hall and dragged his ass out of that meeting because he would have given the store away or he would have, you know, bribed people because mm -hmm. he was a corrupt mm -hmm. asshole. Yeah. But yeah. it was one of those things where you you cannot let this go unsupervised. Right. And the idea right. that these people were waved into this meeting, these lunatics and Trump's like, and he had to have asked for them. Oh, these no, that's what just, happened. Yeah. You want, I want these guys in my office in two minutes now. Yeah. Do it. And then, and and I, I want to draw a distinction. It wasn't team normal and team crazy. No. It was lawful evil Republicans colliding with chaotic evil Republicans. Exactly. Everyone in that room was an evil fucking bastard. Everyone mm -hmm. in that room was complicit. Everyone in that room should do, be doing time in jail. And the fact that some of them saw the actual rioting, law-breaking consequences of the last act of their horror show as something that they might actually get, have to pay for with mm -hmm. federal time. Is not is not something that you put on the top line of your resume, right? I mean, um, it took it took a staffer who worked for the chief of staff's office to mm -hmm. bravely come forward, a twenty five year old young woman yep. to come forward before Pat Cipollone would come in with his three thousand dollars suit mm -hmm. and and tell the truth. Oh, and honey. even then he was ah oh, privilege. No, nah, that's privilege. Ah, oh, that's privilege. Now yeah. he's within his rights to say that he's within his rights to sure. plead the fifth the whole time, but. Uh, he did corroborate her stories. He did yeah. say, you know, this is accurate, or I would not say that's not accurate. You know, he used a mm -hmm. lot of lawyer talk. <laughs> yes, he did. He went to law school for this stuff. He, he, he gets paid, you know, thousands of dollars an hour for to be that guy. Yes, he so, does. Uh, but he's not a hero. And no, for him to no. say, Mike Pence deserves a Medal of Freedom. Yeah. Uh, my eyes just rolled so by, far back into my head. Well, and, you know, the, the threshold for heroism among yeah. Republicans who I've said this, you know, probably a dozen times now, who are so horny for heroes mm -hmm. in the shit pile that is their party. Right. That, that they will grab any asshole off the street who's done anything right ever and mm -hmm. try to pin a medal on him. And as I said, you know, in any pond of open sewage, there's a turd or a dead rat floating slightly above the surface. And Pat Cipollone wants to pin a medal on it. Mm -hmm. No, it's all sewage. The whole party from top to bottom, from side to side, it's all garbage. It all has to go. Now, that is the problem, of course, because they're not going anywhere. But I do not have to sit here on our little podcast and, and, and muse about all the people who should be given medals. Because honestly, if standing up to Republican perfidy and depravity and lunacy was medal worthy, I've said this before, Every goddamn liberal blogger in the universe deserves We're 10 medals of freedom and a parade. Yep. yep. And all the people who suddenly came to Jesus in 2016 or 17 or 18 or 20 or, or 10 minutes ago. Or 2003 or 2007. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I would have respect for any or all of them if they weren't all so goddamn terrified of mentioning the past. 
Yeah. If they weren't so goddamn bent on protecting their career and their portion by saying, well, you know, I came forward, you know, I, I, it took a bazooka to my head, but I finally was forced to do the right thing. And everyone, oh, oh my God, such courage, such, if that's what passes for courage in the GOP, no wonder you're fucked. Hey, Drift Glass. Yes. Uh, You've noticed a trend in the media lately. I have. Blue Would you like to um, talk about that? Yeah, that pretty much every day you can find examples in the mainstream press. Lots of them trying to score career points by taking gratuitous shots at Joe Biden. There's plenty to criticize with the Biden administration. But these are ones where it's like just drive by elbow to the throat bullshit that's completely unnecessary. But it, it sort of burnishes your, your, uh, your resume. This feels a lot like 2016. Mm-hmm. Or everybody mm-hmm. was so sure that Hillary Clinton was going to win that there was no cost to them professionally to just taking shots at her. Right, and Matthew Dowd in the would, neck every day. Right. Yeah, Matthew Dowd like, well, if you're going to talk about you know Donald Trump's insanity and depravity, you got to talk about Hillary Clinton's emails. You can't do one without the other. And they were all all wrong. They were all assholes, and they all kept their jobs and they all got promotions. But this feels like that all over again. This it's a it's a cost free way to advance your career and make you look like a hero to every clique of lunatics you're leading to go up and, 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 you know, hit Joe Biden in the face and run away. Um, but this one really raised the bar. And I got to say, this one made the internet smile. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm going to read you three quotes about the imaging from the uh, web telescope this week, big event, big deal. Um, an awesome picture, etc. took place in the white house. Now, two of these are fake and written by me. One of them is 100% real, and you have to guess which one's real and which news source it comes from. So, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right. Quote number one. The setting in the White House's South Auditorium, which evoked scenes from the bridge of the starship on Star Trek, may well have also whetted the appetite of Democratic activists for the Biden original series to end its four-year mission and hand the ship over to the next generation. That's quote number one. Quote number two. For Mr. Biden, the reveal of the images was also a chance to engage directly with an event that will almost certainly stir wonder and pride among Americans. At a time when his approval rating have plummeted as voters recoil at high food and gasoline prices and Democrats question his ability to fight for gun control and abortion rights. Quote number three. The image taken by the James Webb Space Telescope, the largest space telescope ever built, showed a distant patch of sky in which fledgling galaxies were burning their way into visibility just 600 million years after the Big Bang. This is the oldest documented light in the history of the universe from 13 billion. Let me say it again. 13 billion years ago, Mr. Biden said, causing the audience to shuffle uncomfortably as they were reminded that Biden, too, is very old. <laughs> you, first of all, let me say you're a good writer, Drew Glass. Thank you. Thank you. And I, borrowed, I happen to know. I know. Which I happen to know that number two was from yes. the New York fucking Times. The goddamn New York Times. They're, they're they're back, baby. They're back. They're, it's it's two, two, 2016 again. They're back to their old tricks and habits. Um, I I gotta believe having you and I having lived through this cycle of insanity and mm-hmm. and complicity over and over again that they are anticipating that Republicans will gain some power in the fall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not sure how much, but they'll gain some, and that's why CNN is staffing up with a bunch of. A cast off from the Trump administration, mm-hmm. um, the same way that uh, that MSNBC ca- uh, staffed up with a bunch of uh, Bush regime dead enders mm-hmm. just before the 2016 election. Right. Uh, they want Republican viewers, and they want to appease people by pointing out how how they were they were on board. They were critical. You know they 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 did they weren't on on uh, they weren't Team in the Biden. Tank for, no they were on no. Team Biden no no they were they were a news organization, and if that means jamming a fucking Biden sucks and look at inflation, quote, in the middle of a report on the web telescope. Web telescope. (laughs) And you know what? You know what? That made it past. I don't know how many editors. (laughs) Oh, no. I think it was it was asked. I think the editors asked them to put that in there. Yeah. Oh, could you include something about what a dickhead uh, Biden is? That'd be great if you can do that. Oh, sure. Sure. That's 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 fine. Um, And now on to Ruth Marcus. Uh, uh, Oh, you mean the. The Washington fucking Post. Yeah, yeah. The other <laughs> newspaper that is letting right. us all down. Newspaper of record that's letting yeah. us all down. <laughs> and she said, even conservative justices have a right to privacy. Yeah. No, they don't. No, they don't. 
they've told they've to, they've announced to all of us that now there is a, a provision about protesting at the Supreme Court, mm-hmm. but there's doesn't say nothing about steakhouses. <laughs> doesn't no. say a goddamn word about that. And the Supreme Court, if this Supreme Court has has yelled one thing louder and clearer than anything else, it's that you morons have no right to privacy at yep. all. Right. You have the abortion lunatics have the right to crowd around uh, abortion clinics and scream and yell and hold up signs and make your life miserable coming and going every day of the week. Mm-hmm. But we have the right to have a nice meal at a nice steak restaurant undisturbed by the peasants who have been disturbed by our ruling. And that's what Ruth Marcus, who's basically David Brooks in a dress, mm-hmm. says, because she is the one of the many, many, many defenders of an establishment which is in ruins anyway. But yeah. She can't face that. She's well, in retirement you know, and she can't face it. If she can't go to some Georgetown bar and have a drink and an appetizer mm-hmm. and be left completely alone to have that good evening to herself, mm-hmm. what's the world coming to, Drift Glass? Can we have a civilization, please, Blue Gal? Yeah, Can we no. just have Only a civilization? Only for people of a certain income and a certain race and a certain club. Class. Certain club, class. if you will. Yes. There is a club, isn't there? There um, is. And you want to and talk then about I how- wanted to talk about Dave Nyward in, in Daily Coast because yeah. he had a really good article this week about uh, protest and how, uh, you know, yes, uh, Brett Kavanaugh, his steak dinner was interrupted. Um, it turns out that uh, Representative Jayapal has had uh, someone turn up outside her home in the middle of the night, Mm -hmm. driving past in his car three times, shouting at her from his car. Uh, His car was in the street, and uh, she called the police, who showed up at 11.25 p.m. Um, By that time, when the police showed up, the man was already out of his car and in the street outside her home. Mm -hmm. He put his hands up in the air and surrendered, and he was carrying a handgun. Yeah. Uh, And... um, he uh, had yelled, and the neighbors had were he she had witnesses. She had uh, verified her story was verified by people in the neighborhood that he he was yelling, "I'm going to kill you, go back to India, uh, you know, racial epithets, et cetera, et cetera." And so there were a lot of witnesses, and then the cops, and then he surrendered, and he had a gun, and so forth. So this was all very very terrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, now. Kavanaugh also had a man with a gun call the police and turn himself in by phone. Right. He was not near Kavanaugh's house, but he said, you know, I'd like to kill Ka- something to the effect of I'd like to kill Kavanaugh and I have a gun. Come get me. Yes. And they did. Stop me from doing something, <laughs> you know. Bad. Yeah. Insane. Right. Right. Um, neither one of these things is a good thing. No. Uh, and no one is no one in this podcast is saying that. No. Uh. But, uh, you know, Pete Buttigieg was on Fox News Sunday he was. and asked about how terrible it is, Brett Kavanaugh, blah, blah, blah. And here's what he said. And this is in the Dave Nywert, uh article. When public officials go into public life, we should expect two things. And I'm going to tell you the two things. Mm-hmm. One, you should always be free from violence, harassment, and intimidation. Mm-hmm. And two... You're never going to be free from criticism or peaceful protests. People exercising their rights. Protesters are upset because a right, an important right of the majority, oh, that the majority of Americans support, was taken away. Now, that seems very uh, understandable, reasonable. You should be free Mm -hmm. from violence. You should be free from harassment and intimidation. But you're a public figure and you're never going to be free from uh, criticism and peaceful protests. Right. Uh, this seemingly sensible answer was twisted at Fox News to claim the Buddha judge was justifying violence, harassment, and intimidation. Obviously not. Um, the- <laughs> Obviously, now, that's not what he said. But you know, right. and and we know that Fox twisted it. We know they twisted. They took it for three days and said Buddha judge endorses violence. Uh, so far, as of as of the writing of of the. Dave Nyward article, Fox News has not even mentioned the threats directed at Jayapal. No. Why would that? Um, it interferes with the story. All. It doesn't yeah. exist. Right. And But I wanna, what really mattered to me and what I thought was so podcastable is um, the last sentences of uh, Dave Nyward's article. 
This is how the world works in the right-wing alt-America, where any kind of liberal protest, peaceful or otherwise, is portrayed as horrific political violence against America itself. While an attempted insurrection by a mob at the U.S. Capitol is portrayed as a patriotic exercise in their free speech rights. Yep. This is what the phony Antifa is an existential threat narrative was always about. Concocting a non-existent enemy whose agenda and behavior is the mirror image of their own Mm -hmm. as a way of not only justifying their own violence, but creating permission for it. And... You know, you can take a page out of early Hitler and, and yeah. go off with that. But uh, I, I think it's so important to recognize that when the, the alt-right and, and the right-wing media is freaking out about any challenge to the Supreme Court's authority in terms of free speech and protest, what they are doing is giving permission to their own people to commit violence. Commit, Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And... Uh, we, we've said this on previous podcasts, but I think it bears repeating right here. The reason all of these individual actions are happening, the reason that that from the outside, the entire Republican Party appears deranged, the base appears unreachable, they are reprogrammable meat bags, as we've said, and the reason that recently former Republicans just can't stop bashing the left. Mm-hmm. They, it, it's wired into them. They Every time they go, go off on a, a seemingly sane direction, they end up but here's the thing about the progressive media. And they just start shitting all over people like you and me. Yeah. Because before all of these, antecedent to all of these things, was the prime directive that was drilled into their heads by people like Newt Gingrich and Rush Limbaugh and Spiro Agnew and on and on and on. It's yeah. that liberals are the ultimate evil. They need an enemy as big as their paranoia. Mm-hmm. They need mm-hmm. an inflatable enemy who they can inflate as big as they want to justify whatever sh- craziness that they're they're up to these days. And so, I mean, there is a a wonderful video floating around out there. Uh, you can go look it up on Don Winslow's Twitter stream of Liz Don Cheney. Winslow. He speaks Don for Winslow. all lefties everywhere throughout time, space, and imagination. And there's a a couple <laughs> of videos out there of Liz Cheney from 2019, 2020, not 1997. Yeah. Saying that uh, de- the Democrat Party are a cabal of uh, of evil baby killers <laughs> and communists, and just as calm as can be, you yeah. know, this is who they are. They want to murder children. They're all okay with it. They all want to murder children after they've been delivered. There's they want to turn uh, the the uh, the birthing room into a killing field. Uh, just as calm as you can be, as you know? a mother and a patriot, and, which is like, <laughs> which is a blood libel. Which is yeah, right. Liberals right. want to murder children because they're liberals. Mm-hmm. Which is you know you can trace this back to 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 Newt Gingrich mm-hmm. and yeah. Susan Smith, nineteen ninety yeah. whatever it was. You know, yeah. she murdered her kids because that's what liberals do. That's what they do. Yeah. And yeah. once you have convinced the people in your cult that the ultimate evil is anyone on the left then anything is justified to stop them. Yeah. Lying, yeah. cheating, stealing a Supreme Court nominee from that that terrible Kenyan usurper, it's all justifiable. It's all justifiable right up until Donald Trump pulls the trigger. Yeah. And then suddenly they notice, oh, where the hell did all these fascists come from? You grew them, son of a bitch. You, yeah. you, you sowed the field, you planted the seeds, you watered them, you tended them. This is the crop. This is what you have created. And this is what we were trying to warn you during all the years you called us crackpot alarmists. So this is what they get. And the threat is absolutely real. And it always comes from the original prime directive on the right, which is liberals are the ultimate evil and anything is admissible to stop them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We had a really good sermon in church last week. We did. We did. It was a knockout. You know, And this is not preaching. We're not going to preach. Yep. We're not going to evangelize. Um, but I think you and I would like to talk a little bit about the Bible as literature. Mm-hmm. And as with all literature, what's interesting are the intentions of the writers. What was the, what were the writers trying to do? So to do that, we have to define some terms. Um, I'm going to talk about the 137th Psalm. And there are 150 Psalms in the Bible, and they're all they cover all occasions. They cover, you know, getting old, being alone. Dying, living, marriage, failure, contempt, captivity, you know, any any human condition you can think of, there's a prayer out there for you. 
Um, and it's, it's, it, and you all know the big ones. You all know the Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. Pretty much everyone knows that either from the original 23rd Psalm or from the Pink Floyd riff from the sheep song <laughs> on animals in the background, um, where he maketh me to hang on hooks in high places. It's a riff on the 23rd Psalm. So you all know what these are. Uh, they also show up all over the popular culture in all kinds of places. There's a, a book by William Faulkner, If I Forget the Jerusalem, and a poem by Elizabeth Smart, and a short story by Arthur C. Clarke, If I Forget the O Earth. And Stephen Vincent Benet has a, a, a short story called By the Waters of Babylon. So the Psalms show up all over the place, and they're a prayer. And what's important to understand about them is the intention and motivation of people who write them. What was going through their minds when they wrote this? You don't have to believe in God or any of this stuff to understand what the authors were going through. And what they're going through in the 137th Psalm is they are a conquered and defeated people. They are trapped uh, in a land that, they, that is not theirs. Their captors laugh at them, mock them, make them sing songs about their beloved Jerusalem after the Jerusalem had been burned to the ground. Ah, and this is like, okay, liberals, why don't you start singing songs about Roe versus Wade? Ha 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 ha. Why don't you sing hippie, hippie, hippie songs? Right. Go why ahead. don't you sing, sing hippie songs about women's rights? Go ahead. Sing, go ahead. Go ahead. I am woman. Go ahead. Give us another round of I am woman. Why don't you dance for us too? That's what this is about. These mm -hmm. people are, are sitting by a river weeping because they've lost everything. Mm -hmm. And it's also an extremely bitter, angry prayer, which is perfectly allowable. Mm -hmm. And the last, mm -hmm. the last lines are about wanting Babylon to just be destroyed. And not just destroyed, but, and this is the, these are the last two lines of the, of the psalm. Happy is the one who seizes your infants and dashes them against the rocks. Mm -hmm. So angry, so angry that they lash out and, and they want children to be murdered. Mm -hmm. That's how angry they are. That's how desperate they are. And it's also their captors, uh, children, the future their captors, of their captors to be destroyed, destroyed, right. utterly destroyed. And this is a prayer offered to a God they know at some level is not coming to save them. Right. Yeah. It is, it is not offered to God so much as it's thrown in God's face. Mm -hmm. It's a fuck you. Why aren't you doing something about this? Don't you see that we're suffering? Why aren't you taking action? Why aren't you destroying our enemies? How could you let us? You saw this. You see what they're doing to us. How can you let this happen? And can I say that uh -huh. last night, uh, youngest child sat down with me and she'd just gotten back from a trip and had a wonderful time and so on and so uh -huh. forth. But she was, we were talking about abortion and guns and everything. And she hasn't been to Sunday school. She's been kind of angry at the church and she's going sure. through it and that's fine. And she'll mm -hmm. figure out herself what her spiritual needs are and meet them. I have every confidence that she's going to do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm there for her in whatever way she decides to do whatever that. she wants to do, right? whatever she wants to do. But uh, she looked at me and she said, mom, faith without works is dead. Wow. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> hey, that'd be a good bumper sticker, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. She said, you wow. can't just sit there. And she wasn't talking to me, but she said, so many people are out there, thoughts and prayers, or thinking that you can just wish this away. You got to work. You got to fight. And if you're not working and fighting, and she wasn't, again, she wasn't talking to me. She knows where I am, you know. Right. right. Uh, but if you're, if you're just wishing this away or wringing your hands and thinking maybe it'll be better tomorrow. You're not doing what you need to do. Right. And uh, Absolutely I, true. I found it interesting that an 18-year-old girl had figured that out already. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> you know. You know it, it, it's the Shakespeare... water in which she swims in this yeah. house, but yeah. Well, and there's a reason that Shakespeare and the Bible are the two most quoted and quotable right. you know, right. sources of literature right. in right. the West. Right. Because uh, uh, there's a lot of horrific nonsense and a lot of bullshit and a lot of rules mm -hmm. and a lot of stuff mm -hmm. that should be you know, ignored, but yeah. there's a lot of really good stories in there. A lot of really, yeah, I mean, right. you know, there's, there's a place as with Shakespeare, you'll find every sort of person in, in the Bible. You'll find every sort of person in Shakespeare. That's what makes them so relatable. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But this is not and, evangelism. And I'm not saying that she got Faith Without Works is Dead no. by reading it in Paul's letter. She no. might have heard it on Euphoria. I right. have no <laughs> I have no idea. But she heard it from somewhere. It doesn't matter. But like right. you say, those kind of quotes are everywhere. Right. They're, they're right. saturated. And, mm -hmm. and, and this Psalm, 137th, is pretty well known, but it's not as well known as the biggies. But it's pretty well known because it's horrifying. Yeah. 
It yeah. really is. It's like we are defeated. We're destroyed. Fuck you, God. We want you to kill the children of our enemies. and want you to do mm-hmm. it right now. And and they're not. And it's not going to happen. And they know it's not right. going to happen. Yeah. And you know, in 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 very real terms, the Babylonians were drinking their captors' tears. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They were enjoying their suffering. And you know what? You look around us at our enemies, these fascists and lunatics who are rolling back our rights, who are slicing up our democracy, and they are laughing and enjoying every fucking minute of it. And they're reveling in our suffering. And they're proudly drinking our liberal tears. And what we have on our hands in a lot of cases are various crises facing us, which are political and legislative. And since presenting God with ultimatum is no longer in fashion... (laughs) <laughs> we look around and lash out at the most powerful people we know mm, yeah after all, we yeah. elected them to protect us from the madness and the madness keeps yeah. happening and how could you abandon us to these monsters mm-hmm. why aren't you mm-hmm. more angry joe biden why aren't you loosing executive action thunderbolts and bringing these fuckers to their knees why aren't you just declare washington dc to be a state and have done mm-hmm. with it why don't you just snap your fingers why don't you why are you refusing to appoint 13 new Supreme Court justices? Why are you failing us? And I understand that anger. I totally understand it. I understand the frustration. I understand the despair. I do understand it. I also understand what, where a lot of it comes from. Not all of it, but a lot of it comes from sadness and tragedy mm-hmm. and despair and just fury that no one is coming to save us fast enough. No one is doing, no one's coming for us. Mm-hmm. And because, you know, you start taking those things apart and it's like 60 votes in the Senate, 60 votes in the Senate. Do you have an extra 10 senators? Do you, are you filibuster? Because all of the things that I want and I agree with and I share, the anger with which I share, sound to me, not all of them, as I said, much of them sound like furious, bitter prayers flung in the face of authority that we think should be saving us from this thing and they aren't saving us. And so I do understand it. But we have our part to play too. And by our, I mean all of us. And all of us, there's only one road forward. And that is a control of the legislative process sufficient to put through the laws and policies that will protect us and make this country better. There is no other way forward. And But I think we also need in in that action to be bold and courageous in doing absolutely, it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Try one, things. What Can we talk about that sermon? Because it was based on this verse. And uh, this was a visiting pastor who was retired. (laughs) And so he has liberties to say things from the pulpit because he's he's not really that accountable compared to a full time pastor. He can call white nationalist Christian evangelicals heretics. He and he did. And he from the pulpit. (laughs) I don't know if you know this. That the H word is a very big word. Yeah. to be using in a church from the pulpit. Yeah, and he did. He said, Christian white nationalists are heretics. He also addressed what the United Methodist Church is going through, uh, the divorce that we're going through over LGBTQIA, and he used that term from mm-hmm. the pulpit, which in the past has caused some older member to walk out of the church forever mm-hmm. because you shouldn't use those letters in a row mm-hmm. uh, from the pulpit. Um, and, and he said... He pretty, he basically said tough. You know, yeah. we're divorcing over this. Deal with uh, it. Uh we're on we're on the side of equality and acceptance and welcoming and love and so forth, and that's it. Uh and it and you know, it's take it from my perspective, in my heart, this is taking forever. <laughs> oh yeah. It, it <laughs> and, it's taking a thousand and, years. It just yeah, it's come taking on already. twelve years or, or so to get this done. And and a lot of people are saying, Well, you know, it took look how long it took the Catholic Church to and Latin mass. It's like, that is not helping your case. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. You're, if that's you're your arguing... excuse for not getting, allowing gay people to get married in the church, that is no excuse. Right. It's bullshit. Um, but uh, the other thing, so he mentioned that, he mentioned the uh, heresy of Christian white nationalism. And then he had been asked to give this sermon right after Buffalo. Yeah. When a white nationalist with you know, a Twitch stream and a manifesto had hunted down black people in a grocery store. Yes. And then Uvalde happened. And then Highland Park happened after he had written this sermon. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also an article, I haven't read it yet, but there's an article in the New Sojourners that says, 
I've run out of mass shooting sermons. Uh huh. You know, none left. Thoughts and prayers are empty yeah. and meaningless. They don't mean and that, anything. And that was his last, the last point that, that I'm bringing up is he, he had swear words to say about thoughts and prayers that he said he wouldn't say from the pulpit. Yeah. But he said, liar, liar, pants on fire. Do your jobs. Your job is the general welfare and the health and safety of all of us. And you're not doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, thoughts and prayers is a definite he didn't say this exactly, but thoughts and prayers is a marker that you are enslaved to the gun lobby. That's yeah. it. Well, it's 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 without works. Yeah, it's... right. It's prayer without works. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, there was a, a media moment that I wanted to bring up. Oh, we need to tell everyone. Yeah. Um, stand up and open your hymnal to page 433. Ah! <laughs> Why? Oh, because you know we talked about <laughs> That's Bible stuff for a while. Our little sermon, yeah, yeah. Well, and Bi- I hope this is Bible hope everyone... bastard, not Bible bitch. It's Bible bastard. Just I, I really do. I, I hope people who are impatient with this sort of talk take it for what it is, which is this is a work of literature that a lot of people lean on, that a lot of people have faith in, and the the intentions and history and desperation of the authors, what they were going through at the moment this was written is what makes it interesting literature, whether you, yeah. whether you have well, any faith Yeah, well, and it's helpful aside. to me always to know that, and I, I told you this last week, and I talked about it on the podcast last week, of, you know, following Jesus. Oh, yeah, look where he ended up. Yeah. <laughs> you know I, mean? yeah. I want that. When I, when I pray and I'm feeling angry and frustrated and so forth and try to turn to Jesus for help and, and thoughts, it's like, oh, great. You great. were nailed to a tree as, yeah. as telling the people love each other. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Um, this was just something that uh, popped up in the media that caught my ear. And it was Alex Wagner on MSNBC uh, after the hearing on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And she said, I think it is important to underscore on a day like today, you had some people that came that are not a militia culture. These are the uh, two men who testified live, who were uh, caught up in the emotion of the day broke into the Capitol. Some of them were filming. Some of them, one of them was filming and the other one was a, just, just a, just a Trump supporter. Mm-hmm. Um, not a militia culture. The groups that I spoke to before the election said, if president Biden wins, it is fraudulent. This is going to be another civil war. Right. They're These ready. were the three percenters from Georgia. They were doing weekend training. They had nom de guerre. They were, calling each other sergeants and generals. They had a battle plan. The president goes to the last box on his list, the crowd, weapons, Mm -hmm. and a military group of Americans that are organized. Some are skilled in military tactics to get them to be the head of the battering ram to breach the Capitol. They were trained and organized. And this was when it caught my ear. She said, everyone knew it. Yes, they did. They talked to me before the election, and Trump's cronies knew as much. Well, of course. Of course they did. Everybody talking to sources in Washington, D.C. that week knew. And I asked the question at Crooks and Liars, were there any reporters at the January 5th pregame show with Alex Jones, with him screaming himself hoarse, 1776-1776, and Roger Stone telling telling the crowd 1776 and Mike Flynn saying soil, this soil that we're standing on, we're going to defend war talk. Mm -hmm. And the next day, Roger Stone is in the war room. Hello. Mm -hmm. With Steve Bannon, whose rhetoric has always been militaristic in terms of takeover of the government. And who was Roger Stone's security contingent? Oath keepers. And this is so similar, uh, what Alex Wagner said to the 2016 election, that everybody knew, but no one was yelling from the MSNBC podium, you know, watch out, this is going to be violent tomorrow. Right. This is going to be very, Uh, very bad. Yes. Very violent. It is a coddled and insular press corps that refuses to sully themselves with actual Republicans and to consider that they are fascist and military. They consider them cosplayers and minimize their impact on our country. 
there was an interview Chris Hayes did with an expert on this sort of thing who said, you know, she, he asked, you know, I always thought of them as just cosplayers and losers and incels and, you know, didn't really have any uh, possibility that they could succeed at this. And she said, losers can be very dangerous. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and so they, they consider them cosplayers. They talk to them in a diner. You know, the, the old Republicans in the diner, but that when they talk to the three percenters, they're not taking them seriously. They see them as cosplayers. But then they cash in on covering the controversy and book deals and special sure. coverage. Mm -hmm. But some, like Dave Nyward, who I read from earlier, have been warning the rest of the media for literally years. He's yeah. been on the right wing extremist beat. So has the Southern Poverty Law Center been on the mm -hmm. right wing extremist beat. For a long time. And as the woman that Chris Hayes was talking to, I'm sorry, I don't remember her name, but she said, thank God for January 6th, because actually people who had who had dismissed these folks now see what they're capable of. Mm -hmm. But since the media has been warned for years and since they won't come out of their coddled, we don't have to know what Rush Limbaugh was saying, as we'll David call it, Brooks said. We'll call it the Ruth Marcus bubble, shall we? Yeah, the yeah. David Brooks Ruth Marcus bubble. Mm -hmm. You'd think they'd want to do their jobs better, but apparently their job is not to do that. Golly, maybe lying about the threat to our country that is right on their doorstep is their job. So I, I invite everyone to go and listen to Leonard Cohen's Everybody Knows. Because <laughs> uh. the anger in that song as well, everybody knows and everybody wants a box of chocolate and a long stem rose. Because mm -hmm. that's, uh. what, that's what they think they deserve for ignoring the story. And they'll get it too. They'll get yeah. it. Yeah. They'll get the, people who warn correctly of the danger that is coming. And then mm -hmm. when the danger comes, um, those people are all, always swept aside because they're inconvenient. Nobody wants to yeah. hear, I told you so. That's that's very unsettling. They want to hear, you know, five minutes before the bomb went off that, that I predicted it. Yeah, you helped build the thing. Oh, thanks so much, Charlie you can, Sykes. You're such a genius. You, can, you, you, you built it. You said it. You can hear the ticking. And honestly, all of this reminds me of six little words. I'm sorry, seven little words from 2001. Mm -hmm. Bin Laden determined to strike in the U.S. Yep. Yeah. It's like the warnings were all there. The boards were flashing red. And you bring this up occasionally, too, that remember back during the Kenyan usurper administration when intelligence services were saying white nationalists are a danger to this country. Oh, yeah. Conservative, yeah. right-wing white nationalists are the most dangerous threat. And the Homeland right, Security Department was telling people that, right. yes. And every every news outlet on the right and everybody with a megaphone lost their shit. Well, and two the, people in particular, Britt Hume and Michelle Malkin. And Michelle Malkin just lost, lost their minds. Had a cow, had a because, public cow over it. Because Barack Obama and his communist minions are targeting these patriotic Americans who've done nothing wrong except and express trying to themselves, silence blah, 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 conservative blah, 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 blah. voices. Right, right, and that's and how terrify you... us and make us afraid that the FBI is going to come knocking at our door for opposing this tyrannical administration. Mm -hmm. Right, right, and and the guy who was you know who who got out his best T-shirt and jean jacket to appear, you know, he he got started at the Bundy Ranch. Yeah. I mean, you know, th th all of this were the, the raptors testing the fences. Yeah, where can we yeah. find a hole? How can we get inside? How can we get to the point where we can overthrow the government? This has been the Republican agenda going back to Gingrich. Mm -hmm. Gingrich, mm -hmm. Newt Gingrich was telling people point blank that first we get rid of the liberals. The mm -hmm. liberals are the problem. Once we've gotten them the hell out of government, then we can have whatever the fuck we want. And Rush Limbaugh was telling his audience way back in the 90s, you know, once the liberals are all gone, we should still keep a few of them around like in glass cages and universities. In zoo animals, to, right. To display to future generations. Right. This is the eliminationist rhetoric that the Republican Party and all the assholes on right-wing radio like Charlie Sykes were sopping up and repeating decade after decade after decade. So how fucking dare they get surprised when, oh, you mean, you, you mean literally? Oh, I didn't mean that they should literally do this. I just meant they should figuratively do this. You know, that was taking Trump literally, but not figuratively, literally, but not seriously. It was all this dodge. It's all this pretense because the idea that people in your neighborhood, people who own businesses in your town, people who are elected to city councils where you live 
are actually fascists and mm -hmm. actually part of this movement is a scary thought. Mm -hmm. And people in the media, in the mainstream media, want to keep you from being scared by an actual immediate threat that is pervasive and ongoing. Mm -hmm. Hurricanes are fine. Fires are great. Uh, shootings, where you can come running to the scene and the police cars, are, the, the lights are rolling, wonderful. Those are all outside catastrophes, will of God or some lone gunman. But the mm -hmm. idea that the biggest threat facing this country is the guy down the street and the yeah. mob of idiots he hangs out with at the bar, that's the real threat. Those are the real fascists. Those are the people that my grandpa and, and my uncle went over to fight and die against in World War II. Mm -hmm. And now they're living down the block, preaching the same hate, and the media is like, oh, shit. Well, let's just pretend they're not there and hope for the best. And when mm -hmm. the best doesn't happen and the shit blows up, we can all pretend we didn't know it was coming. We can all pretend it was just Trump. Deal. Yeah. And get a book deal. Yeah. And it's just Trump. Just Trump and some some crackpots. Just Trump Trumpism. and some enabling it's people. It's Trump. Yes. It's not the Republican Party. You know Jimmy. You know Jimmy for years. He's a Republican. He's not a bad guy. Well, yeah, Jimmy's a bad guy. Jimmy might be a really nice guy when it comes to fixing potholes. But Jimmy goes home at night and watches Fox News and believes this bullshit. And believes and Jimmy, in white replacement theory. Yeah. Yep. So Jimmy, the best you can say about Jimmy is he's cannon fodder mm -hmm. for the organized violent ones. But they're all in it together and they're all heading in the same direction. And it's up to the rest of us to stop them. Um, Let's do a news roundup. I think that's a wonderful idea, Blue Gal. Uh, the latest Omicron subvariant has quickly become dominant in the United States, according to the CDC. In the U.S., BA5 now counts for about 54% of all COVID-19 infections. BA5 is highly transmissible and manages to at least partially skip past some of the immune defenses acquired through prior infections and vaccinations. So mask up, people. If you're, if you're in a congregate group, mask up. The Biden administration told hospitals that they must provide women access to abortions in emergencies, even in states that have banned the procedure following the Supreme Court's decision to end a constitutional right to abortion. In its seventh public hearing, the January 6th committee detailed how divisions between White House lawyers and outside advisors pressing Trump to pursue election fraud conspiracy claims exploded into a, quote, unhinged meeting that featured screaming, personal insults, accusations of disloyalty, and a challenge to fight physically. It also, in my opinion, since all this was done live and the the, the uh, blogs of this and all of the exhortations from the loonies were all done live on the air, replete with pussy and motherfucker and fuck you. <laughs> TV, um, yes. <laughs> my, my, I, I believe we have just seen the FCC potty mouth commission resign en masse because, yeah. oh my God, that's what we're that and and you know what they should have done that. That's the actual yeah. language being used by the actual people involved, and you need to it's hear evidence. It. It's it evidence. It's evidence. It is soften evidence. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. The January sixth committee notified the Justice Department that Donald Trump contacted one of its witnesses who has not publicly testified yet. After our last hearing, President Trump tried to call a witness in our investigation, a witness you have not yet seen in these hearings. Liz Cheney said. That person declined to answer or respond to President Trump's call and instead alerted their lawyer to the call. Their lawyer alerted us, which means I think there might be a voicemail. Yeah. And then it came out this week that uh, it came out the next day that this person is a lower level staffer in the White House, not a political appointee of Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. So that takes away his, I was just calling him for a golf date, I call right. him all the time, excuse. Right. A federal judge refused to delay Steve Bannon's trial on charges of criminal contempt of Congress. Dude, you already did the crime. Your trial's going forward. <laughs> Saying, I'm sorry, can I put the money back in the bank does not negate the robbery. <laughs> After refusing to cooperate with a congressional subpoena from the January 6th committee for nearly nine months, Bannon informed the panel that over the weekend, he was willing to testify. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he is now. And this is the worst of both worlds for him because he gets to go on trial for a crime he definitely committed and he has to testify anyway. So way to go, Steve. Genius move there. Bannon's reversal came after he suggested that Trump had waived his claim of executive privilege and permitted him to testify. At no point has Steve Bannon ever been eligible for executive privilege or any other privilege. One very interesting sign that noted camera hog Steve Bannon hasn't shown up for the last two hearings to get photographed walking into court he just sent his attorney isn't that interesting 
Yeah, well, it's... he's trying to delay the the trial, and the judge is having none of it. Yep, but nope. he's not showing up for the camera opportunity. No, that's a sign things are bad, bad. in Bannon's world. A Fulton County judge ordered Lindsey Graham to testify before the special grand jury in Georgia that's investigating Trump's attempts to overturn the 2020 election. Judge Robert McBurney described Graham as a, quote, necessary and material witness to the grand jury and ordered him to testify on August 2nd. I want to know how much that judge laughed at Lindsey Graham saying I I shouldn't have to testify because of who Graham. I am. I want to know yeah. how thick his Scottish accent is. <laughs> Robert McBurney would like to see you in chambers right now. <laughs> um, the FDA is reviewing its first ever application for an over-the-counter birth control pill more than 60 years after the hormone-based pills were approved by the FDA. This And, this and pre-Roe v. Wade being overturned, this there was resistance to this in the yeah. reproductive rights movement because it's going to be expensive. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know... Obamacare covers the birth control pill. That's right. So having an over or the counter option was seen as increasing cost to women. But in post row universe, it's what you got. Being able to buy these in bulk online and having them in your house to give to anybody that needs them, you know, this is the thing. Um, mm -hmm. One month before the state's primary elections, our neighbors in Wisconsin, the Republican Supreme Court has ruled that most ballot drop boxes aren't allowed in the state. The court also ruled that voters are required to physically return their own absentee ballot, meaning a voter can't have someone else return their completed absentee ballot on their behalf. Yeah. Uh, Senate Democrats have reached an agreement with Joe Manchin. And that sentence alone just cracks me up. Yeah. It's, you know, you agree. But isn't he in your party? Nah, not really. Not really. Uh, to raise taxes on some high earners to keep Medicare from going bankrupt. The plan effectively slimmed down version of the Build Back Better Act that Manchin scuttled last year over fears of rising inflation would impose taxes on certain income from pass-through businesses. The tax is expected to raise around $203 billion over a decade, which would be used to sustain Medicare's key trust fund until the year 2031. And the thing they won't talk about and they never talk about is that the number of Medicare recipients is going to drop precipitously over the next 20 years. Yes. We'll all be dead. Yes. <laughs> That's they, they don't talk about that. Uh, the number of open U.S. jobs fell to 11.3 million in May, down from 11.6 million in April. While it was the second straight monthly decline in open positions, there were 5.95 million people unemployed in May, meaning there were nearly two available jobs for every unemployed person in the U.S. And, of course, that's skewed because there are areas of the country that have more oh, yeah. jobs available than others. Yeah. Um, we're going to play one of your favorite games, which is Guess the Party. <laughs> guess the uh, Party. Guess the Party. A third arrest has been made in an alleged Colorado election security breach. Would you care to guess the party of the malefactors? This is from the Associated Press. The former elections manager for a Colorado clerk indicted on charges of tampering with voting equipment has been arrested on allegations that she was part of the scheme, an official said on Wednesday. Sandra Brown, who worked for Mesa County clerk Tina Peters, turned herself in on Monday in response to a warrant issued for her arrest on suspicion of conspiracy to commit criminal impersonation and attempting to influence a public servant, said Lieutenant Henry Stoffel, of the Mesa County Sheriff's Office. The arrest was first reported by the Daily Sentinel newspaper. State election officials first became aware of a security breach last summer when a photo and video of confidential voting system passwords were posted on social media and, wait for it, a conservative website. Peters, who has echoed former, Donald Tr former President Donald Trump's false theories about the 2020 election and become a hero to election conspiracy theorists, lost her bid to become the GOP candidate for the Colorado Secretary of State last month. She first came to national attention when she spoke last year at a conference hosted by MyPillow CEO, Mike Lindell, one of the most prominent election deniers in the country. August Every 18th and 19th, Drift Glass. That's when Mike Lindell has reset the clock to when Trump's going to be reinstated as president. I was wondering what the new date was. I, you oh, know, yeah. I've got little scratches don't all miss, over my calendar. Don't miss his 24-hour telethon. It you know. apparently is the biggest event in world history. World history, um, yeah. yes. Uh, the entire Murdoch empire, Fox News, the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal, and the New York Post 
immediately went all in on the 10-year-old abortion story is fake, fake, fake made up by Joe Biden. Turns out that's not true. Uh, Fox News host Emily Campagno said, what I find so deeply offensive is they had to make up a fake story. Meanwhile, the alleged rapist was just arrested and charged. Turns out he's an undocumented immigrant, so now they've got another story to tell. Yeah, they just uh, pivoted like overnight. They pivoted. Too. Blink of an eye, immediately changed to it never ha- from it never happened to it, it was an illegal. Mm-hmm. Fox News had the Indiana Attorney General on to say he's opening a criminal investigation of the doctor in the 10 year old's abortion story. They then aired the doctor's photo. So they're either actively trying to get her killed or they just don't give a damn that they're putting her in danger. Yeah. And either one is horrifying. It, it, I'm shaking how angry I am about this whole thing. It's, it's you know, it's Dr. Tiller. It's yeah. Bill O'Reilly. It's, it's normalizing the concept of violence. Violence. There's the bad person. There's her picture. What are you patriots going to do about it? Who mm-hmm. will rid me of this meddlesome abortion doctor? Mm-hmm. Who, by After- the way, was responding to a child abuse situation. Yeah. yeah. Who had to cross a state line to get that and, done. And I just, I just want to say, you know, for all of the nonsense that's going on on the right with, uh, you can't tell me who a woman is and you can't tell me who, you know, there's all this uh, transphobic nonsense coming from the right. Mm-hmm. And then now they really do want to parse what an abortion is. Yes, absolutely. Because ectopic pregnancy, well, we're not going to call that abortion. If it's 10 years mm-hmm. old, we're not going to call that abortion. And yet their rhetoric since 1973 has been baby killing, baby killing, baby killing, baby killing. Yep. That's, hey, that's Liz Cheney through and yeah. through. You're murdering yeah. babies. You're murdering babies. They're a bunch of baby murdering monsters. Yep. Yep. Um, You know why, this is a complete aside, but I'm going to do it anyway. Eating beaver tail was permitted by the Catholic Church, mm-hmm. even though on, on Sundays, uh-huh. because it was delicious, and therefore the Catholic Church declared that a beaver was a fish. Mm-hmm. And since mm-hmm. a beaver was a fish, you could eat it. On Fridays, and, yeah. On Fridays. And that yeah. is the kind of logic here. Oh, this is inconvenient for us to argue over, so we're going to declare it to be not the thing we just said it was. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. neener, neener, neener. Um, no, uh, we at least are not going to let them get away with that. After their stock price plunged following Elon Musk's announcement that he wanted to scrap his $44 billion deal to buy their company, Twitter is suing Elon Musk. Twitter stock dropped more than 11% as investors anticipated a drawn-out legal battle. It might be difficult for Musk to prevail since Twitter's acquisition contract says it can force him to close the deal. Take a wild guess what the largest single contributing factor in the May inflation report is. Is it gas? No. Nope. Nope. Is it groceries? No. Nope. Is it Hunter Biden's laptop? It is, isn't it? It is. It's Hunter Biden's laptop. No. Yeah. No. Fortune magazine reports that the largest single contributing factor in the May inflation report was landlords jacking up rents. Mm-hmm. God damn you, Joe Biden. And all the apartment buildings you own. <laughs> Sean Curse Hannity you. owns a lot of apartment he, buildings. He sure does. Hey, Slumlord. Slumlord mm-hmm. Sean. Um, in local news, this is a very small story that I just want to mention. Springfield aldermanic redistricting maps are up for debate at our local city council. <laughs> and then there's a much longer story, which I, I would like to read, if you don't mind, Blue Gal. Sure, go right ahead. It's This is from Rich Miller's Capital Facts. Rich Miller's a guy here who's been... Uh, inside man at the state capitol for decades and decades uh, in an article t- entitled Oppo Dump and Out of Town Stupid. And it's all about a guy named David Sirota who's trying to stir some shit up again. And Lord. he got schooled. Uh, the Sirota story taken from his Substack independent reporting thing uh, hints darkly about J.B. Pritzker's alleged conflict of interest because the NRA sometimes uses Hyatt hotels for their conventions. Here's a fun fact. While the Pritzker family made its fortune from the Hyde Hotel, J.B. Pritzker has never had anything to do with them. But then Sirota goes on to allege that despite all of his big talk about gun control, Pritzker has refused to bring the legislation to the floor. That's just a flat out lie. That's not now, true at all. Anyway, now, I'm sorry. I know David, I know a lot of stuff here. Go ahead. When David Sirota got publicly schooled by Pritzker's spokespeople, I believe they mentioned his movie being shitty, for example. <laughs> uh, 
Maybe you should stick to writing crappy movies that are too long instead of journalism, that sort of thing. <laughs> he did the usual asshole Sirota thing by upping his in unsupported accusations. Very Greenwaldian. Um, this is reading from one of his tweets. Illinois Governor Pritzker just deployed his spokesperson to attack Lever News, which is his you know, substack trash bag, for reporting that he and Illinois Dems have refused to pass assault weapons ban legislation stuck in the Illinois state in Illinois state legislature. Last line of the tweet, subscribe to Lever News to help us do this reporting. Again, make shit up and then ask for money. Uh, the fact that the bill's sponsor named State uh, State Representative Maura Hershauer of Batavia has been doing all the things one does to gather support and co-sponsorship for any bill. She's been calling her Democratic colleagues, gauging their support, and the bill has picked up a co-sponsor, but that happened in June after the end of the session. And so David Sirota escalated again, this time charging that Pritzker and Democrats were somehow secretly blocking such legislation. Again, that... It's just a I've been following line. this. I have been following this story and where this, these bills are going. What is happening with gun control yeah. in Illinois? He's telling. He's not telling the truth. Okay, go ahead. He's lying. Um, yeah, he's lying. And David Sorrell lies an awful lot. Um, then Rich Miller, owner of Capital Facts, did what any actual reporter would do. He sent the bill's sponsor a link to David Sorrell's bullshit post, and at first glance, Representative Hershauer thought it was a Republican attack. When Miller pointed out that this was coming from a left-wing group, the representative said the following, Well, that's a head-scratcher and doesn't match up with the thoughtful and supportive conversations I've been having daily with members of my caucus and folks in the Democratic Party. That's David Sirota. That's Bernie Sanders' former comms director, David Sirota, who does this shit all the time and gets paid for it, apparently. So, but that... That came into my backyard, so I thought maybe you all want to, would want to hear about that. Yeah, he, Drift Class is going to shit on David Sirota. You'll just have to get used to that. Yeah, well, <laughs> when, when he steps, I haven't talked about David Sirota for years, yeah. but when he steps into my state and attacks my governor with some made-up bullshit mm -hmm. to raise money for his Substack thing, then you will hear from me. But Drift Class, he's, he resigned from political blogging. Yes, he did. He was, in, because uh, cause political writing was, was very uninteresting in the... It was beneath Era him. of our dear leader, right? Yeah, it yeah. was beneath him. I'm yeah. going off to China. I'm going off the grid. Yeah. I'm not. You're never going to see me again. 2009, and, I think it was. Yeah. yeah, he he did. And I said, Apparently, while he's in China, I'm going to be on the phone with the food stamp people. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, you know, he was just. Uh, he's a special case. He's a special. He's one of, and he's one of. Glenn Greenwald's earliest and most special friends. Uh, Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. But this week's Internet Kitties are the dogs currently living with middle child. Oh. Our own middle child has uh, Maggie and Ellie in the apartment that she's living in. And they are so sweet. They're, they really are basically middle child's dogs. Middle child texted me this week to complain that these dogs only want food when it's freshly poured. Oh, my God. I know. <laughs> All of a sudden, I knew it was a sign that they have to be the Internet Pups of the Week. It's true. From this week on, Maggie and Ellie only eat freshly poured pet food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, your pets will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Maggie, the calmer dog, and Ellie, the backup hyper dog. Uh, they are watching Big Bang Theory in this picture. And uh, they are at our Facebook page and website. You can send your internet kitty dog or other pet to us at our email address, prolefpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag Jail to Joy. I have heard rumors and reports from people experiencing mail delays with their primary ballots. Uh -huh. That is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and we love doing this podcast. Do you want to say something to, about what Saturday is? Oh, of course. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, 
a special announcement. Um, I want Blue Gal to cover her ears because she doesn't need to hear oh, this. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, this Saturday is Blue Gal's birthday, and she would very much like it if you would appreciate that fact and uh, give her applause and give her love online and send her money because money is a really useful birthday present that we can use for all kinds of things. <laughs> Just like consider, yarn or yarn. Cons- <laughs> consider this my version of David Sirota telling you that J.B. Pritzker <laughs> secretly hates gun control and you should <laughs> definitely send me money so I can keep talking this shit. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm 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 the other I'm the other end. You're just you're just busking for your wife's birthday. That's all. I am. I am. Yeah. And I you know I'm tapped and and uh we will soon, we hope, fingers crossed, be uh at least once or twice a week um live and on camera. We're we working it. on that. It's we, it's hot it's tough. It's tough. We're we're figuring it out. And this but week was was too complicated. We had uh, yeah. too much stuff fly in our face to and it slowed us down. It will not slow down this podcast. This podcast goes forward no matter what this podcast moves in one direction forward and we don't care who we hurt in the process this, no, this podcast is just so solidly blocked into our week it that is. the is, calendar is. is always empty on thursdays so mm-hmm. we know to do this but the uh fitting fitting other things into the rest of the calendar every week is kind of tough that sometimes is, especially when you have but, car trouble we've had weird car trouble this week so we have yeah but we're gonna fit in a birthday celebration for blue gal oh, on yes. saturday we're going yeah. to find a way to do that. And and I want to thank everyone who's so kind to me and loves me and I love you back. Uh, our listenership was just, you guys are dear, dear people. So thank you for being there. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com for details. We have PayPal, postal address information there. It's all there. It is never too late to mail me a birthday card. Don't worry about that. If that's your thing. I love getting birthday cards. Uh, ProLeftPod.com has our mail address. It's also at the beginning of the show. Please share our show on social media. And if you love this particular episode, you can also send five bucks just to let us know that this episode meant something to you. And we thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties have asked their attorneys to decline all calls, texts, and emails from Donald Let's Trump. think about living. Think about living. Just think about loving. Think about loving. Just think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with the switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license, copyright 2022, DGBG Productions Incorporated.